Hi friends, recently I began to actively work with all sorts of different batteries, in particular lithium ones. This is usually included battery and individual cells testing, assembling and servicing batteries and protection boards for them. For effective and productive work you need the appropriate equipment, which fortunately I have. But there is such a nuance. Sometimes you have to restore batteries from small electric vehicle. Many assemblies don't have a proper cell protection and balancing board. To select cells for a finished battery, they must at least be checked for capacity and internal resistance. During charge-discharge cycles, it often happens that some cells lag behind others and all these necessarily needs to be balanced. Cell balancing is usually performed during charging to equalize the voltage on the cells. Otherwise, one cell may charge more, another less, and then during discharge, one cell will drop to a critical value. Because of this, the battery management system will turn off the battery at the lower voltage threshold, although by that time, the other cells haven't yet given up their full capacity. As a result, the energy supplied by the battery will be much less, and this will happen because of one cell. What I mean is that you always need to make sure that after a full charge, the voltage on the cells is identical. Balancing systems are designed for this very purpose. They monitor the voltage on the cells and if it reaches 4.2 volts, the balancer controller will command the MOSFET transistor to open. An open transistor will put out all excess to the resistor. There are more advanced active balancing systems that don't waste cell energy, but today we will talk about the good old classic options. Many BMS boards are equipped with a balancing system, but as a rule the balancing current isn't large and ranges from 80 to 150 milliamps. If the battery is capacious, then such a current is useless. Today I decided to make a separate balancing system for classic lithium-ion batteries for personal needs. I will be honest, at first I wanted to make a circuit based on popular microcircuits like the LM317 or the TL431 reference voltage source, but you'd say that there are better and simpler ready-made solutions, so I will go a different way. I will use the factory circuit diagram as a basis, but the balancing current will be increased significantly. Let's look what turns out. Here is a protection board with balancing. This part is one balancing channel. If you look closely, you will see that there are a few components. It is made on a microcircuit marked BB3A, also known as HY2213-BB3A, and a small end channel MOSFET SL2302 with a drain source voltage of 20 volts and a current of up to 2.8 amperes. The open channel resistance is an average 50 milliohms if gate voltage is 4.5 volts and a drain current is 2.8 amps and resistance is 0.6 to 0.8 milliohms if gate voltage is 2.5 volts and a drain current is 2 amps. This is important to remember since the balancer circuit is entirely powered by one cell, the maximum voltage of which is no more than 4.2 volts. I'm going to increase the balancing current and add LED to indicate that the balancing is in progress. Now we turn on the computer, launch Altium Designer and draw a diagram and then trace the board. Altium is currently the best environment for developing electrical circuits of any complexity, printed circuit boards for them and simulating the operation of even the most complex structures. In 3D mode it is possible not only to admire our board but also to edit it. This program is used by thousands of electronics developers around the world, including electronics manufacturers. There are a lot of libraries with components for every taste, many training videos that will help you quickly master the program. By the link in the description, my viewers can purchase the program with a 25% discount. The datasheet for the controller specifies voltage limits. The controller is activated when the battery voltage reaches 4.2 volts and turns off when the cell voltage is about 4.19 volts. Next, let's make calculations. I'm going to make a balancer with a current of at least 1 amp. 
Based on the required current and voltage on the cell according to Ohm's law, it is easy to understand that the resistor on which the excess will be extinguished should have a resistance of 4.2 ohms. Here we don't take into account the fact that in the circuit the open channel of the transistor is connected in series with the resistor as well as the LED. But to calculate the power released on the transistor, this must be taken into account. With a current of 1 ampere, taking into account the resistance in the worst case equal to 80 milliohm, in fact there will be 50 to 60, the power released by the transistor will be 0.08 watts, rounded to 0.1 watts. The power dissipated on this type case is about 0.35 watt, that is, the reserve is more than three times. But nevertheless, I decided to connect two such transistors in parallel. Next, calculate the power of resistor for 4.2 volts and a current of 1 ampere. It is 4.2 watts, which is a lot. All this power will be released on the resistor in the form of unnecessary heat. So it is for this reason the balancer on standard protection boards is made for a low current, 10 to 15 times less than in our case. And this is only for one cell. If the number of cells connected in serial is great, then the losses increase multiple. I repeat. I know very well about all sorts of impulse options, active balancing systems. There is greater efficiency, but the option under consideration is more popular today. They are simple and inexpensive, and the budget in many cases determines the choice. Since I'm making this system as a universal option, which will only be used during charging and will not be located in the body of the battery itself, then such a sacrifice is completely justified. By the way, I made a small mistake on the board and also forgot about the LED, so I did everything again and now everything is as planned. The load resistor is a pair 10 ohm 5 watt resistors in parallel. In the end, the resistance will be 5 ohms and this is more than the calculated one, so the balancing currents will be less, but this isn't essential. It also made a connector and a couple of wires with crocodiles at the end. We cling to the battery and balance it. If you need uh, to balance the voltage on several cells at the same time, nothing prevents you from making several such boards with a set of wires. Well, now the tests. Let's connect the balancer to the laboratory power supply. I slowly increase the voltage on the block, simulating the battery charge. At around 4.2 to 4.22 volts, the balancer turned on and began to put out the battery. Balancing current is about 850 milliamps. At a voltage of 4.19 volts, the balancer turned off. Everything works like a clock. I measured the current composition of the board in the idle mode and it is only, again I forgot to write it in the script, so I will insert a picture. The indicator LED lights up when the balancing process is in progress and goes out when the process is complete. Such a system can be used separately while charging batteries, and after charging and balancing it can be simply turned off, and also together with the battery. Yes, it gets hot, but the wires can be lengthened and a balancer can be installed outside the battery housing. Please note that the balancing process isn't quick and depends on the battery capacity. Even after charging process is turned off, the balancer will work for some time until the voltage on the cells equalizes. A balancer is a mandatory attribute for any modern lithium battery. Without it, sooner or later, an imbalance will occur and the service life of the cells will be reduced. It also eliminates problems associated with incomplete release of battery energy due to the fact that some cells are fully charged and the BMS board turns off the charge, by which time other cells haven't yet had time to charge. If there was balancing, it would extinguish the voltage on the charged banks, delaying the operation of the BMS board thereby giving time for the lagging banks to recharge. With a subsequent discharge, such a problem, as already said, will lead to incomplete release of energy from the battery. Again, I will point out that this board is only for one lithium cell. You can make as many of these balancers as you like for any number of consecutive cells. Well, I think I told you everything. 
It remains to remind you that using the link in the description, you can download the project archive. There will be a diagram and boards both in Altium Designer and in Easy EDA as well as Gerber's for ordering the factory or viewing and editing the board. For example, in the good old sprint layout. Now I say goodbye with you as always was Kasian TV.